Welcome back to the show. Check out these headlines this morning here. Coinbase possible relist of XRP. We'll talk about it. Then let's take a look at this. Circle USD coin doubles its valuation. Can you say IPO? Because I can. FBI creates a new division for crypto. And how about the unsealed documents from Ripple and Chris Larson and the SEC motion asking for reconsideration and clarification? Really? And Yahoo Finance executive order for the White House for crypto. We're going to talk about that and what to expect. And XRP's price is aim is still high, is what the technical analysts are saying. Let's take a look at it. Somebody rolled that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. $1.846 trillion market cap for crypto. We're bleeding heavy heading into the weekend. We're off by more than 5%, 5.11% to be exact, right here for crypto. Right now, Bitcoin sitting just over 40,000. Ethereum trying to get back to three at 2,800 plus. We see XRP still at the number seven spot here at 77 cents. We are off by 5% or just under for the seven day and 3.68 of that is in the last 24 hours. Take a look at the price range. 78 cents here on Fiat Link. We're at 75 cents on the bottom, 81 on the top. We'll keep an eye on it. Let's get right into the news because there's a lot to go over here. We start, we start with this right here. Shout out to Kathy from ARK Invest, Kathy Wood. And uh, apparently this is what happened during their interview on CNBC. And to make sure that there was no confusion or embarrassment here, you can see the eyes on Kathy. She puts out a post that says, CNBC may have 40-minute time horizon, but ARC is five years. Thanks for having us on CNBC. We're happy to pay for your upgrade Zoom count. You can't be a knowledge worker without it. Oh, goodness. I think ProCoin News nails it here. Want to know how far mainstream media has fallen? They can't even pay for a full version of Zoom. <laughs> Woo! Moving on. You should follow ProCoin News right here. We see that uh, it is possible that there is an igloo for sale in Georgia, according to Digital Asset Investor. And here we look at the idea and notion that Coinbase possible relisting here. Let's get into this because it is really interesting what's going on here. Coinbase relisting XRP, 40 million reasons to think so. There's a lot of big news out today involving Coinbase and XRP, and it's leading many to believe Coinbase is gearing up too soon do something we have all waited years for, which could be relisting XRP. Now you look here, it all starts with a transfer made today of 40 million XRP into Coinbase's wallet. And it says here, yes, folks, digital asset Coinbase said none of us could trade without, uh, was just trans, I'm sorry, none of us could trade, was just traded, transferred into their wallet. And we see here 40 million of them. In fact, hey, Gary, is the 40 million XRP that was sent SEC violations or has a deal already been reached? I have a feeling we will soon see. In the meantime, you can see the actual transaction that was shared by many, many others online. But there's, there's a little more information here that I want to share here at the bottom here. So let's take a look at this because this is what's really interesting. Take a look. So at the same time, that we're seeing 40 million XRP be moved to Coinbase or purchased, however you want to say it, by Coinbase or sent to a wallet there, whatever the proper wording is. We're also seeing Coinbase relist how to buy XRP, and it points everyone to Coin Market Cap, where you can obviously click the you know the button there to different platforms of how to get it. Now. You know, it is suggested actually by BitBoy in this little clip, which I'm not going to play you, but he suggests that the reason they did that is for the SEO, the search engine optimization, to get the traffic from the clicks on XRP getting so much attention. 
So you have to wonder, are they in fact preparing to relist at some point? Now, I'm not saying in the next day or so. I'm just saying, is it actually showing us that they are poised for a relist? And it's something to truly consider. And so is this. Circle. Now, you know how I've told you guys about the USD coin, the stable coin, USD coin. And as far as I can see, this in my eyes is in fact the, and, and I'm speculating, but I've said it many times, and I'm going to say it again today. I believe that Circle, which is backed by Goldman Sachs, becomes the public private relationship with the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve for a front facing. U.S. digital dollar. And quickly, we could leapfrog to the front of the line ahead of Russia, who is testing their ruble, the digital yuan, which is widely being distributed at this point, used in the Olympics, and be at the front of the line of the fourth industrial revolution. And speaking of circle and doubling their valuation, by the way, and I mean doubling the valuation to $9 billion. Yeah, not quite a deck of coin like Ripple, but you know what? Check this out because Ripple's back on the board at Link2, Link2.com. Listen to what Ray Fuentes has to say here. And I've got some more Im Im important information under the hood at what's going on at Link2 as well. Check it out. Hey, what's going on, family and friends? Ray Fuentes here, community manager at Link2, dropping in to light a match under your you know what. President Biden is expected to issue an executive order next week directing agencies across the government to lean further into CBDCs or central bank digital currencies. And we all know who's working closely with governments from around the world to issue CBDCs. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Two words, Ripple Labs. And for those of you who may not know this, Ripple announced a few weeks back that they were buying back their shares from the early investor Tetragon Financial at a price point which confirms the company's valuation at a whopping $15 billion. Right now, Link2 is offering Ripple at an implied valuation slightly under $8 billion, honoring the original valuation of the Ripple Series C funding round. So if you haven't packed your bags and your pockets with Ripple pre-IPO, you better get on it, especially if you're trying to lock in that early retirement like me. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Get on that early retirement train with me. Love you mucho. See ya. There you go. Shout out to Link2 and Ray Fuentes. Ripple back on the board for how long? Not long, because it never lasts long when it's on the board at Ripple uh, or at Link2. And here's something else that's extremely good news. Looking under the hood at the kind of companies that Link2 has on their platform, we got to look at uh, Uphold because they're on that platform and you can get that. And there's not much of that left right now either. And when we take a look at this, basically, I want to show you that Simon Mc McLaughlin is, is, uh, has been appointed now to being the CEO. Now, he's replacing J.P. Theriot in that position, but J.P. Theriot is being elevated to vice chairman immediately. Listen to this. With special responsibility for strategic partnership and M&A under Terriot's leadership uphold grew revenues by over nine times to more than $250 million in 2021. Shout out to both of those gentlemen for how hard they're working. And by the way, his responsibility in a new role for strategic partnerships and M&A, mergers and acquisitions, baby. What's uphold got coming? I tell you, you can get this stuff on link to. Looking right here, new department being made and developed here from the FBI. It's called the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team, NCET, I'll call it, NCET. And just looking at this very quickly, I want to give you this part with rapid innovation of digital assets, distributed ledger technologies. We have seen a rise in their illicit use by criminals who exploit them to fuel cyber attacks and ransomware and extortion schemes. Trafficking narcotics, hacking tools, illicit contraband online, uh, commit thefts and scams, and launder proceeds of their crimes. It says here the Ass Assistant Attorney General Kenneth 
A polite junior says of the Justice Department Criminal Division, NSEAT will serve as a focal point for the department's efforts to tackle the growth of crime involving these technologies. Yoon Young is an accomplished leader on the cyber and cryptocurrency issues, and I am pleased that she will continue her service as the NSEAT's inaugural director spearheading the department's efforts in this area. NSEAT was established to ensure the department meets the challenge posed by criminal misuse of cryptocurrencies and digital assets and comprises attorneys from across the department, including prosecutors with background in cryptocurrency, cybercrime, money laundering, and forfeiture. So I tell you, uh, you know, inside of this, I had to say, and, and I had to do it, right? This is what I had to do. Take a look here. Because I put down here, and I'm pretty sure my response is in here. Let me see if I can find this for you. Because I think I have found the perfect place for them to start. That's what I think I've done. And if you look down into this thread here somewhere, you're going to see me where I share the Joseph Lubin audio of him explaining how to disguise your identity and fake accounts for the initial coin offering of Ethereum. I think that's a great place for NC to start its initial investigation right there. Yeah, how about that one? This is from James K. Filan here. The SEC filed a motion for reconsideration and clarification of Magistrate Judge Netburn's DPP, which is Deliberative Process Privilege Ruling. In other words, very quickly, there's hundreds of people joining the channel every day, every week, or what have you. So let's understand this, okay? So you know, DPP really is the, the shield of protection the agency uses to protect all their documents and conversations to not let anyone see it. Now, because the judge had ruled that the speech from William Hinman, regardless of what we all understand the way they positioned it, is in fact his personal opinion, so it does not fall under DPP. Now the SEC is running scared, in fact, right? And this is the letter they submitted and the other pieces of evidence, which is a lot. I'm going to give you the condensed version that really shows you the SEC's recent motion shows all of us just how scared they are for us to find out what is in those email drafts prior to the Hinman speech giving Ethereum the free pass. Their backs are against the wall. Now, I'm going to show you this right here, and this is the kind of language they're using. The release of dozens of drafts of the speech, the vast majority of which reflect opinions and thoughts of staff other than Director Henman, would result in the very chilling of agency deliberations the court sought to avoid in this order. They don't want to give it up. That's what's up. But I have a feeling because... The judge has ruled that some documents from Ripple be unsealed, which we're about to take a look at, that I think what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And we're going to take a look at this right here. Another one. Shout out to James K. Filan. This guy is so, so kind and grateful to have him in this space and share this information, I tell you. And it's funny, too, because he made a comment about the, the, the motion that the SEC filed about reconsideration and clarification. Isn't it funny that the SEC is asking for clarification now? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this here is a letter that was unsealed, as far as we can tell, with one minor redaction in it here. It says, and it's from Chris Larson, so it was revealed. It says, founders were issuer rather than Ripple Labs, so Ripple Labs could be a user, not an issuer. This is why, this is why the founders were gifted, right, a certain amount of XRP, and then it was also pre-allocated to Ripple Labs from OpenCoin, right? It was not a situation where they did a fundraise for the for the token, right? That's not what happened. So they obviously had venture capitalists and partners of that and that nature. But nevertheless, what we're talking about here is how they handled this from the beginning. So founders assume risk of being issuers, which persists today. So the the, the notion of a security coming from the founder could be an issue. But this protected Ripple Labs, according to the confirmation of this particular exchange we're seeing here, and was a key point in our first convertible note with investors like, not mentioned and blacked out here, but you have to wonder, like, who is that that fits inside of that little spot there? Could it be the Fed? Could it be some other big central bank? 
Could it be the treasury? I don't know. You know, B, I'd love to see that. What's under there? At any rate, 20% was comp for founders personally assuming this risk. Also, analysis from Perkins and Coe was that the investors and employees could not receive XRP, could risk SEC designation of security. Only founders could, Jed, Arthur, and myself, Chris Larson, right? Further post-March 13, FinCEN guidance, Ripple Labs designation as user rather than issuer. This is important because it lists Ripple Labs as a user, just like any other customer using XRP. You see what's going on there? It's not establishing them as an issuer. This to me says case closed, ladies and gentlemen, is what it says to me. And I'm 12 years short of a law degree, but I can't wait to hear further from John Deaton and attorney Jeremy Hogan. And we're going to hear from John Deaton in just a second. And I think he shares something very powerful and continues to be key, reducing the risk to Ripple Labs holders like Jesse, increasing risk to founders issuers. Further, the ledger was uh, was reset hundreds of times leading up to the public launch in December 2012. Nonetheless, the ledger simply reflects property ownership of XRP, which was founders 20%, Ripple Labs 80%. Hope this helps. There you have it right there. So let's go on and get a look at this because this was a mic drop moment, I believe, from John Deaton. He says, if true, and Chris Larson paid Perkins Coey's and others in XRP for legal services 2012 memos, it's absolutely brilliant because it would be the first use case of XRP, a substitute for fiat currency to pay for professional services, something you don't do with the security. Might drop XRP is a currency, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what unfolds from there. And let's see what unfolds from here, because this here is Yahoo Finance, and this is Jennifer Schromberg, who's going to tell us what to expect from this executive order that's going to drop on crypto next week. Check it out. Good afternoon, Brian. That's right. President Biden set to issue a wide ranging executive order on regulating cryptocurrencies next week. The president will direct agencies across the government to study cryptocurrencies as well as a central bank digital currency and come up with a wide ranging government strategy to regulate digital assets, according to an administration official familiar with the matter. Now, the order reads like an alphabet soup of agencies here in Washington that will be tasked with looking into crypto. Specifically, the order will commission a study of a CBDC and ask Treasury, along with the Department of State, the Attorney General, the Department of Commerce and Homeland Security, and other agencies to develop a report on the future of money and payment systems. Now, the director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy will do a technical evaluation of what might be needed to support a CBD system. FSOC will be asked to study financial stability issues that arise from digital assets. And the attorney general, along with the FTC and the CFPB, will be asked to consider what the impact of growth in digital assets could be on markets, while the SEC and CFTC will consider market protection measures within their own jurisdictions. Now, the order will also look at measures to protect consumers, businesses, and investors. It will also delve into privacy issues concerning digital assets, as well as distributed ledger technology and the potential impact on the environment there. Uh, these studies will be anywhere between 90 to 180 days, and these agencies will expect it to be to report back to the president on this. So, Brian, a very wide-ranging effort by the White House to thoughtfully think through how to regulate crypto. The administration. And there you have it, right there. We got we got a window here, 90 to 180 days. Now, when that that is for the agencies that are required to take on these tasks from the executive order, saying, go figure it out from your end and your agency and your purview and your oversight and everything else we involved, right? Risk, pros, cons, the whole bit. They're going to figure it out. So I look in, in the government, I expect them to take as long as they can possibly take. I'm guessing it'll be the 180 days and I'll be happy if it's any shorter than that. But to go along with that, that means till the agencies that are going to be um, directed by the executive order to do these things till they have to report back. So that doesn't mean at 181 days, we're going to have clarity. 
I think at 180 days, if they take that long, you're going to see them report back. And then we're going to have some period of time after that before something is really crafted and dropped by FSOC and other respective agencies. Do want to remind you very quickly that the CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, has already amended things to really point out that they believe that Ripple and XRP can be used to affect cross-border transfers between banks and credit unions in a very positive way and have written that. We've covered it many times. You can Google it in the search section of my YouTube channel. All right, now really quickly, what about XRP price while the market is falling and bleeding heavily headed into the weekend here? Well, Dark Defender reminds us here that 74 cents and 70 cents are still areas that we could find support if we fall lower, but XRP is still aiming high for 123, 203, 336, and 458, which also aligns with the overall vision of CoinsKit, technical analyst as well. This is not financial advice from me or anyone else. Happy Friday. Make sure you check out all the links in the description and comment box. They're great products and services I use each and every day with great specials and deals, but you gotta click the links. Catch you on the next one.